What's up guys? So in this video, I'm gonna be telling you the things I hate about the Pocket 4K. I already told you what I love about the Pocket 4K, so let's go ahead and talk about the things that I do not like. Now, just a disclaimer, the Pocket 4K for the price of 11, whatever, $1,200 with DaVinci Resolve, you just cannot complain about this camera. With everything that it packs, you just can't complain about it, all right? It's just, there's nothing in this price range that can compete with what it can do. However, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you the negative things that I did find out when using this Pocket 4K for about a week and a half now. All right, the first thing I don't like about this camera is the auto expose button location. For some odd reason, I mean, I have small hands, I always accidentally press this button because it's so close to the thumb grip handle on the camera and it's so annoying to expose everything right and then accidentally pressing the auto expose buttons and it changes your aperture and it sucks. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is I already talked about in a previous video is the focus peaking. The focus peaking is not that good especially in like noon daylight really sunny day it's really hard to see you're definitely gonna need to find a way to put a sun hood on this screen because it's not that bright which takes us to the next con of the pocket 4k which is the screen itself i hate two things about the screen is number one i already said it it's not bright enough for sunny days and the second thing is that the lcd screen is not tiltable so when i was shooting a wedding this past weekend man it sucks getting some low angles because i wasn't using a monitor i try not to put too much crap on the gimbal and camera I just try to go for the most simple setup ever and it was difficult. If I had a monitor, it would have been much better, but not having a tiltable, that's not even a word, a tiltable screen on the back really sucks. All right, the next thing I don't like about the camera is that this camera eats batteries like it's nothing. Pro tip, go ahead and get you some Canon LPE6's batteries because they do last more than the off-brand batteries. I have two other off-brands that I'm telling you, the Canon ones actually last longer even though they all have the same wattage of capacity. Uh, the Canon ones just last so much longer. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is the annoying red clipping in the footage. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about right now and you can see this in brake lights, neon lights that, that's red. It's pretty annoying. I'm hoping they'll kind of fix it in future firmwares, which they've done in the past with the black hole sun a couple of years ago. So I'm hoping they can fix it, but you can always fix this in post, which I'm gonna try and get a tutorial for you guys out there. The second to last thing that I don't like about this camera is going to the record mode when you're in playback mode. So to do this, you're gonna have to lightly tap the record button. When I say lightly, you really have to do it carefully because if you press it really hard, it's actually gonna start recording. It's gonna start using up your SSD drive or CFast 2.0 cards. So that's kind of annoying. I wish there's another way you can go back to record mode without actually accidentally having to press the record button. So the last thing that I don't like about this camera is, is the stills mode. Uh, I made a video before saying that there is a stills button on there and I didn't think it was supposed to work, but it's actually live, it's working. But it's weird because when you press it, it the button itself is kind of wonky and you don't get a sound. You have to look very carefully for the little icon that pops up on the back of the LCD screen telling you that you have taken that picture successfully. I tried using this stills mode when shooting a time-lapse, like a moving time-lapse or a hyperlapse, whatever you wanna call it, but it was just very hard for me to tell if I actually took a picture or not. So that's pretty annoying at my part. I know it was an additional bonus to add that stills mode right there, the stills button, so that's welcome. But right now it's really not that usable unless they add a sound or something. And if they do have a sound, let me know. Maybe I'm just missing that. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I got for you guys today. Pretty much all the stuff that I don't like about the Pocket 4K. Overall, like I said in the beginning of this video, this camera, you just cannot beat 
for the price.